How could this gorgeous radio, made by a company that wasn't founded until 1961, be made in 1959? Well, the story of a company or brand origin is almost never as simple as the business schools would have us believe. You know how they see it. Get license, set up shop, do business, cash checks. The maker of this radio started out as a sewing machine maker, founded in Japan in 1951, called Funai Sewing Machine Company. In 1959, seeing the booming activity in the transistor radio industry, they changed their name to the more general Funai Light Machinery Manufacturing Company Limited and got into the transistor radio business, choosing the name Wealth as their radio brand. In 1961, the company spun off the electronics division as Funai Electric. So that's how Funai Electric, founded in 1961, made a radio in 1959. This radio has a lot going for it, as you can see. I especially like these louvers. Very fine and delicate, and probably not too practical. One of them is already a bit warped. I bet a trip to the beach would turn this grill into something like spaghetti. The dial area is a clear window all the way around. The radio has a nice shape, not squared off, but nicely rounded here and there. I thought this thing on top was some sort of antenna jack, but no, it's a mounting screw. The wire handle is a nice touch on a pocket radio and reminiscent of Sony's popular TR610 model. In fact, they share the model number, the wealth being a W610 model. Over on the back, we see more louvers and a porthole that shows red when the radio is off. I would think red would mean on, but maybe that's just for toasters and waffle irons. The back has lettering that says unbreakable case, and I can assure you that that statement is pure wishful thinking. There is very little to learn about the radio inside the back since they provide us with no identifying label. All we see is a generic battery label. The tuning capacitor is a Mitsumi, but I don't suppose that's anything you want to bring up at Thanksgiving dinner. Wealth and Funai were part of that massive second wave in the transistor radio industry, that wave that was less about innovation and all about cost-cutting, and that gave us the bland, boring 1960s transistor radios, the kind you see here that most collectors, the stuffy ones especially, have little use for. As a true enthusiast, I've picked up lots of these plain-Jane sorts of radios, and maybe you have too. Another picture I was able to find of Funai radios, a very tiny picture, shows what looks like a Westinghouse radio. This one. It's not a clear enough photo to be certain, but this sure looks like this radio. Here, take a look. Pretty small. Okay, I'll blow it up for you, but it's going to be blurry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same Westinghouse. This bland radio has been in my collection since my earliest collecting days when I just bought every radio I came across. Bland or not, it has just come in pretty handy in fitting another piece of the puzzle into this transistor radio story. And I don't hate it. It was somebody's special little transistor radio back when it was new, I am sure. I've looked it all over, inside and out, and this similar model, and I see no trace of Funai's name, nor for that matter anyone else's as the maker. It just says Westinghouse on the front, and Japan on the bottom of the back. I can't prove it, but for my money, these are Funai radios. Well, they must have ramped up their production capacity very quickly for the young company to be producing the kind of quantity that Westinghouse would have ordered, in addition to everything else they were making, everything else including the typical tape recorders they made. That's a quote, typical tape recorders. This ad is full of great quotes. Wealth symbolizes high technique and reliability. Sensational! 
high mechanism. Funny, I have a degree from MIT in high mechanism. Sensational. You are probably unfamiliar with the Funai name and may think you've never seen any of their products before. But yes, you have. They're the makers of the stuff available today with the Magnavox brand on it. Now, I did a video on Magnavox where I get all into this. I was pretty critical of Magnavox for what it did to itself and of Funai for coming along later and using the Magnavox name. It strikes me as less than honest to fool folks at Costco or Walmart into thinking they are buying an American brand when they aren't. The international electronics giant Philips owns the Magnavox name. Funai just rents the name from Philips. Why not just use the Wealth brand? Because it's a pretty crummy name. That is my know-it-all opinion and final determination. Crummy. So then, why not just be Funai? That's not a bad name. They could do that. Actually, you can see they've even done that. But no, they also want to use the name Magnavox. But I ask you, is Magnavox a name that means literally great voice or loud sound Really the name you want to put on a room air conditioner? No, I think I would have gone with Funai. Nothing wrong with that. Use a little imagination, people. You could have a slogan like, Let Funai put the fun in your battery needs. That's just corny enough to work. By the way, this is their real logo. They might want to ditch the bird, you know? I don't know. Actually, they also use this logo. For a company heavily involved in international branding, they don't really seem to understand it, breaking here, as they do, the first four rules of branding. So, you know Matsushita. They had a name that didn't work so well in the English-speaking world, so they used the brand National in many countries. Then they made up the name Mako from Matsushita Company and used it on products for a short time. Then they went with an even better name. Do you know it? That's right, Panasonic. You've heard of it. And then there's Hayakawa Electric. You know the name they came up with for sales abroad. Sharp. Now, I suppose the most famous of these names to electronics collectors is Tokyo Shushin Kogyo. That company came up with a really short and very good name, Sony. So, as I said, I think Funai sounds all right just as it is. But if they want to adopt another name, fine with me. Make one up. Pay a consultant. Look in the phone book. I just think that using a name like Magnavox, with a history, a history that's not yours, is not right. It's why I didn't name my eldest son Elvis Presley. I don't know. Maybe I should have. And maybe I'll change the name of my YouTube channel here to The Joe Rogan Experience. <laughs>